Mm. Oh, hey there, this is Dr. Evan Osar. Happy Tuesday, hope your week has started out well. On this last series of Integrative Movement Insider, we're discussing how to work with common shoulder issues like bicipital tendonitis, like chronic rotator cuff issues, like chronic neck issues, even though that's not technically a shoulder issue, it's often related to shoulder issues. So in this three-part series, actually, it's a series. <laughs> it's not three parts. It may be more than three parts. I should say, in the upcoming three-part series of Two Anatomy Geeks, we're talking all things orthopedic injuries around the shoulder complex. Because if you work with clients like we do in our clinic, Chicago Integrative Movement Specialists, you work with clients that have shoulder issues. And I was just having this discussion with a group of fitness professionals that I was mentoring. And we talked about the position of how we're having our clients row and how it relates to serratus anterior. As you know, serratus anterior is a muscle that comes from the ribs, ribs one through nine. So if you think about ribs number one or rib number one, it's all the way up here. Like if you put your fingers on your clavicle and go straight back, that's rib number one. And it goes all the way down to a rib, rib number nine, which is somewhere around here. So that's a really long, or I should say, expands a lot of real estate on your rib cage and then attaches to that medial border of the scapula. Now for a lot of our clients, their shoulder issues are directly related to what they're doing with their motor control around the scapula. For a lot of our clients that have chronic shoulder issues, impingement issues, biceps tendon issues. We talked about that last time on two series, two or this series, I should say, <laughs> this series of, of Integrative Movement Insider. You can watch that on YouTube if you missed it. We talked about how this anterior tilted position of the scapula often causes bicipital tendon issues. It also ca causes rotator cuff impingement because if you can't posteriorly rotate the scapula as you bring your arm overhead, you're going to get impingement. So this posterior tilt or the posterior tilt of the scapula is important for optimal shoulder motion, especially overhead motion, but during even pushing and pulling patterns right here or even down below it's important that we maintain that upward rotation and posterior tilt of the scapula. Now, the question that this fitness professional has, she's like, I don't feel comfortable teaching my clients initially to push overhead this direction. I'd rather have them push down here because it's lower and easier. In fact, it's not actually low. It's lower, but it's not easier. And here's why. Because as your arm goes overhead, your serratus anterior, the middle and lower fibers, along with lower trapezius and a few other muscles, but let's focus on serratus anterior and lower trapezius, what they do is they become shorter to allow you to get upward rotation, which is what you need to get overhead motion and keep the scapula stabilized on the rib cage. And essentially, it's putting the glenoid fossa facing up so that the humerus is sitting on the fossa in a more optimal position. Well, when you bring your arm down, the serratus is getting longer. The low trape lower trapezius fibers, those lower fibers of serratus are getting longer. So that means that this position as you bring your arm down is actually more challenging than up here as you bring your arms up because the fibers are getting shorter. That's why you'll see scapular winging quite often. You'll see the scapula come directly off the rib cage as, people, as your clients bring their arm down. In fact, a lot of clients look pretty decent as their arm goes up. It's when they're bringing the arm back down that ultimately becomes the problem. Because again, the fibers of serratus are getting longer as the, arms are coming, the arm is coming down towards the body. That's why when you're training your clients to improve serratus function, we talked about that yesterday on my Instagram live. So you can check that out at Discover IMI on Instagram. We talked about how, how it's important that we change the angle of how we're doing our exercises initially when we're teaching our clients how to control their scapula. So we will start, the easiest pattern to start your clients improving serratus anterior is actually a high to low pull. So if you anchor the band up high and then you have them pulled this direction, it helps to maintain more optimal upward rotation and posterior tilt. If you angle down low and try to pull, it's more easy or it's easier to go into anterior tilt. And it's very challenging actually to keep your shoulder in posterior tilt and then row from a low to high position. Yes, you want to train your clients to do that because again, they're going to be reaching down into their cabinets or, or reaching down to grab their, ch their child or, or something off the floor. But you want to teach them initially when you're training 
for a client to have scapular dyskinesia, so that scapula that floats all over the place, that anterior tilt, the wing scapula, you know, they have the chronic rotator cuff or neck issues, it's easier initially to teach your client to pull from a high to low position to start and then progress them lower. Similarly, when you're teaching your client a pushing pattern, it's easier to push up this direction because again, you're facilitating upward rotation and posterior tilt. It's more challenging if you anchor up high and now you're trying to push down low because again, you're pushing into anterior tilt or the direction of anterior tilt of the scapula. You're also pushing a little bit more down. So you're pushing more towards depression. So it's harder to keep that right scapular position as you're pushing this way. Again, you want to progress your client to doing that. However, it's not the best place to start. So start initially to improve serratus and as well as lower trapezius. Start with a high to low row as well as a high to low sort of pressing action. So that way you're able to maintain, your client's able to maintain more of that upward rotation and posterior tilt of the scapula and then progress them to lower positions. And for some clients, we, we don't ever have them actually push or pull down from lower because it's just so easy for them to fire up their neck or fire up their shoulders. And it's not worth, the, the risk benefit isn't there. So they can get so much more impact by using that high to low pull or that high to low push and minimize the tightness, discomfort, and some of the issues that they're having. Hey, Sue Gleason, how are you? Good to see you this morning. So I hope that makes sense. And I hope it helps you just think about your exercise selection when you're working with your clients. And yes, you want to train them in all planes of motion in all different directions. However, as I'm suggesting, when you're dealing with chronic shoulder issues, like I'm, I'm consulting with somebody today. I saw them virtually online and I told them the exact same thing. This is how we train our clients to start with. We put them in positions where they get their arm above the height of the shoulder. So even when they're doing plank positions, so when they're planking, it's the same idea. It's really the same idea of this position of upward rotation, posterior tilt, even if they're planking down on the floor. Get the, get the shoulder, get the arm above the level the wrist above the level of the shoulder to facilitate upward rotation and posterior tilt. And today when I see them in person, I'll, teach, I'll be teaching them how to do that in person. So again, it's the same things we teach in our, with our clients in our clinic, and it's the same thing we teach during our certification program. It's the same thing we're gonna teach in the brand new three-part series on common orthopedic issues of the shoulder complex coming up on Two Anatomy Geeks. So in September, Jill and I, my fellow anatomy geek, and I will be covering the most common shoulder issues rotator cuff issues, bicepital tendon issues, as well as we'll even throw in there a little bit of, of dislocation because we, we're getting a lot of clients now that have dislocated their shoulder and, and have had surgeries like latter day, latter J, latter, latter J surgery and or remplissage surgery where they're, where they're stapling the, the tendons in, into the bone. So we'll talk about that because you may have clients that have had those surgeries. So we'll talk about some of the complications around those surgeries and things you want to think about after those surgeries. So we'll teach you the anatomy of the shoulder, teach you the anatomy and function of, or I should say the optimal control of the scapula, the scapular thoracic articulation, how to look at the shoulder, a very simple, simplified way to look at the shoulder, and more importantly, how to use your anatomy information to help your clients that maybe are experiencing chronic neck tension or rotator cuff issues or bicep tendon issues. And again, we know this information works. It's what I use on my own shoulders, rotator cuff tears, labral tears on both sides, years of, of chronic issues. And I still can't do anything and everything I want to do with my shoulders, but I can function on a regular basis, still do my chiropractic work, even with rotator cuff tears and labral tears. I've had to modify a lot of things, but again, I know this approach works. It works with our clients that have similar issues when they follow the program. And that's, that's really the key to anything, right? Follow the program, it will generally work. And it allows you to know when to send your client or when your client actually needs surgery or some other sort of intervention, you know, maybe some you know, alternative therapies like prolotherapy or, or some of those therapies that can be beneficial also. So we'll talk about that as well. So the link is next to this video, above or below this video, or wherever you're watching it. We'd love to see you. Two Anatomy Geeks, three-part series, usually about five to six hours. We apply for CCs once this series is done. And again, you're going to walk away with tons of information that you can apply right now directly with your clients. So it's not like, hey, we teach you the anatomy and it's like, hey, go figure it out yourself. Have a good, good day. We teach you information that not only that will help you educate yourself, it'll help you educate your clients 
and then help you solve a lot of clients' issues, especially chronic rotator cuff issues, biceps issues, as well as neck issues. So the link is next to the video. We hope to see you. Make it a great day. And if there's anything we can do, or if you have any questions, put them below this video. I'll check it out and I'll answer your questions. This is Dr. Evan Osar with Discover IMI. Make it a great week. Get out there, lead your clients, and be that leader that your potential clients are looking for. Take care.